Every day, seven Hoosiers die from drug overdoses. And every day, opioid use costs the state of Indiana nearly $11 million. Here in Delaware County, opioid poisoning deaths are nearly twice the statewide average. And non-fatal emergency room visits involving opioids are more than double the Indiana average. Substance abuse does not just affect individuals in isolation. But the good news is that recovery doesn't have to be an isolated endeavor either. Health is Wealth is presented by Meridian Health Services with support from Lifestream Services. Part three of Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit, is about community-wide habit change. How does a good habit grow from an individual to a group to a movement? And how does a movement endure beyond one strong leader? Let me introduce you to an organization in Muncie that I think really exemplifies what this book has to say about movements. My name is Lisa Rosine, and I am the executive director of Recovery Cafe Muncie. So our mission is to create a safe space um, and to have a judge-free environment uh, where anybody can come with whatever, whatever is causing pain and trauma in their life. People can be recovering from substance use disorder, mental health issues, homelessness, poverty, domestic violence, um, hunger, grief, anything that's causing someone trauma and hardship in their life. We want to help them recover from that so that they can stop just existing and start thriving and participating in life. Recovering from substance use disorder is a unique challenge because there's a chemical component. In a healthy brain, when you do something enjoyable like eating a donut, your brain releases dopamine, which gives you that feeling of pleasure. That dopamine hit doesn't last long though, which is what motivates you to reach back for the second donut. When we're repeatedly exposed to that pleasure producing stimulus, our brains adjust. Eventually, we need more and more of the stimulus just to get back to a normal dopamine level. In early recovery, we are starting below the line. I mean, our dopamine levels are depleted. It does not make us happy to eat a good meal because I can't experience joy that someone who's not detoxing experiences when they have decadent chocolate cake. It just tastes like chocolate cake. Sometimes you don't need to feel good in early recovery. Like, it's just not possible to feel good and enjoy it. We have to take the action and the feelings will come. The joy will come. But the beginning stages is pretty flat. If you want to heal and grow from your substance use and you have people dragging you back, that makes it all the more difficult um, versus a place like the cafe where you can come and people are lifting you up and want you to succeed in getting sober or just recovering from whatever you're recovering from. So your support system is really, it's everything. It's the environment you're in. It's what you're hearing, what people are telling you and what's going on around you. I mean, it's very important. I was actively using every day. Um, I was drinking and using drugs to numb myself, numb my feelings from, um, a sexual assault incident. So um, it got to the point where I had reached my rock bottom and thank goodness for the support of my family. They made me leave that environment when I did not want to because it's where I was comfortable. It's where I didn't have to feel the pain of what had happened to me. I did not believe that I was capable of recovery. I did not believe I was worthy of recovery. And I did not believe that I wanted recovery. This was not for me. This was not in my cards. Other people around me, I distinctly remember this one woman giving me a ride somewhere and I saw her eyes in the rear view mirror and she said, you are gonna do big things. You are going to have a beautiful life. And I thought, you are crazy. <laughs> and I just had to believe that she believed. And I also believed that she was once in my shoes. I think that it's extremely important to have connections with people who once were where you are and are now where you want to be. Habit change can move from an individual to a movement when a community comes together around shared habits. 
At Recovery Cafe Muncie, one of the most important shared habits is a weekly recovery circle that's required for every member. This is the same group of eight to 10 people facilitated by a peer recovery coach who is also a member at the cafe talking about what struggles are we having this week? What am I challenged with? What's some growth that I see in myself? And that's a really important time for people to start building that esteem. I am making progress. It may feel like this is taking forever, but I am making progress. And it's an intentional time to, to identify what is that growth right now? You go over your weekly challenge, um, how you've grown throughout the week, and what your goal is moving forward. And at the same time, if you want peer feedback, you can have that. And if not, no big deal. You just move on to the next person. In The Power of Habit, Charles Duhigg says, quote, For an idea to grow beyond a community, it must become self-propelling. And the surest way to achieve that is to give people new habits that help them figure out where to go on their own. Specifically, these new habits create a fresh sense of identity and a feeling of ownership. People come to Recovery Cafe with their identity stripped away, and the cafe helps members build a new identity through classes called School for Recovery. So a lot of folks, when we enter recovery, we don't know what we like because we only know that we like drugs and alcohol. Uh, what else? I don't know what else. <laughs> And now I have nothing because I took away the one thing that I loved most. So we start practicing, I don't know, maybe I like to crochet. Maybe I like to paint. Maybe I like to play drums. Like we toy around with stuff. We experience things together. Recovery Cafe Muncie also helps members build a sense of ownership. Lisa has the job title of executive director, but she emphasized the cafe is really run by the members themselves. When someone first comes in, they're a guest. Then they might choose to become a member. And then members might be promoted to a cafe companion. And that is essentially the host of the cafe, a companion to the guests. And then from companion, folks might be promoted to a member leader. And our member leaders take on a role and a responsibility in the cafe. They take ownership of some part. Our member leaders, if they are consistent and dependable for about six months, they may be promoted to a senior member leader. And that is where they can become peer recovery coach certified. Then they get to facilitate a circle. They get a bigger role in the cafe. This is a resume builder. They are a certified peer recovery coach. And people are watching them. They are leading by example. And the beautiful thing is these leaders then circle right back to that new guest and build those folks up to a companion, to a leader, to a senior member leader and a peer recovery coach leads right back in. It's a very cyclical, beautiful and organic program. And just teaching folks that when you lead, people follow. And when people follow, they lead. And um, just creating the momentum. They are empowered. They are productive members of society. And they didn't, there was a time when they first came that they did not believe they were capable, worthy, or were even interested in having that be a part of their story. So I think leadership is huge. Charles Duhigg says movements don't emerge because everyone suddenly decides to face the same direction at once. They rely on social patterns that begin as the habits of friendship such as the woman who told Lisa she was going to do great things. They grow through the habits of communities. Think of Recovery Cafe's weekly recovery circles. And they are sustained by new habits that change participants' sense of self, like the School for Recovery classes and the member leadership structure of Recovery Cafe. Substance use is affecting our whole community and recovery should be a community effort as well. Hey, that's all for this season of Health is Wealth. If you've enjoyed learning about healthy habits with me, let us know. It's important to us that we share the experiences and stories of our community. And your feedback is how we know if we're making content you wanna see. Share Health is Wealth with a friend and subscribe to the channel to support what we're doing at Ball State PBS. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.